We have Infernoids for you today. I'm so happy to see that this deck week one got the chance to shine. We have Odonic Virtual World. And I'm going to be honest with you, some of these interesting little uh, innovations for the OCG this week are quite cute. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more Oz content. I feel like it's it's a story as old as time with the OCG and that grass looks greener because they're always going to try to find ways to kind of pr uh, break this deck. And Infernoids are uh, they're no they're no strangers to this, especially you know with Tiara being the infinite vacuum of you know destruction that it is. So typically with this build, I mean you're going to go grass reasonings. That deck is getting thinned. No matter what is happening here, uh, you are going to be rolling through all of these terrible cards. You're either going to hit a Fairy Tail Snow Dia Bellstar, or you're going to hit some Dankatrons along the way. Now, remember, the TCG is not really going to get the chance to uh, to take advantage of this because obviously, you know, <laughs> let's shift this to TCG. Oh, yeah, these are at 1 1 and uh, banned. So you're not going to get the chance to really enjoy this. Also, I, I find it very interesting, like, post-side decking. We're going into Lullaby of Obedience just as, like, a power card to, you know, rip something away from your opponent, which is actually kind of interesting. So we're just on one Infernoid and one Infernoid Evil down here in the extra deck, and uh, they don't even play Void Blaze Up in the main deck. I, or I will tell you, this card is good for what it is, like it, for the free dump, sure, but you're not going to want this in every matchup. And also, I mean, you could technically thrust on into this, sure, for some dump ability, but once again, not every game you're going to want to see this. I also see they're really loving this transaction rollback value out here. Transaction rollback with Void Feast is uh, kind of a little cute interaction. I like the, once again, I like the ideas of what we're trying here. All right, it's just you gotta you gotta be patient with the ideas and see what they get out because this is very early in Furanoid conceptions, and I think honestly, grass is probably gonna probably be the best build for this. Unfortunately, next up here we have our Odonic with a um, Horus package. Now, I understand that like uh, the Horus stuff gives you a discard outlet in order to kind of get through some of the stuff, but like your Odonic package isn't even like that. That crazy flushed out. Actually, I think you're putting more emphasis on the Thurion stuff for this build than some of the other stuff that you're kind of doing. Actually, I feel like this, this is just, you know, just reptile support just so you can, you know, have the interactions with Elysia. Um, we're also only playing one copy, the King's Sarcophagus. Um, of course, the triple copy is the Snake Rain, so you can at least, you know, see the Caruse here in terms of things. I also like the fact that we get to play the uh, Supreme Sovereign Servant out here for this build, but uh, most of your extra deck down here going to be revolving around rank eights. That's that's all that this this is. It's just it's the reptile flavor of the month sporting off the fact that hey, you know, we can mix some reptile stuff with this and we can actually kind of see, you know, things kind of change up. I mean, fortunately, very basic deck idea at, at its core fundamentally, but it does kind of once again showcase some of the cuteness that you can start getting into in your meta out here. And I don't know, I, I like my degeneracy, but uh, there, there could be a little bit improvements to this build. Next up, oh baby, we have Virtual World. Um, now, we have a decent amount of equip support going on in here, which I, I find... I find interesting because it's, is it just so that we can do power tool shenanigans just so you can go ahead and start attempting to load up these, these large support cards? Cause I mean, what, uh, you make all your opponents mods lose, uh, currently controls his tag equal to half the equipped monsters attack. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. You slap down the, uh, heavy metal armor and then you, uh, do the wrapped in us and start a battle phase and change the equipped monsters battle position. If you do, and you can immediately normal summon. Eh. Interesting. Um, this is... They're just putting... I mean, to be fair, like... Virtual World actually can do things 
with Power Tool Braver Dragon. So I guess it's kind of cool that we're seeing a Virtual World Synchro combo deck actually loading in some bra uh, bricks out here just so you can go ahead and equip up to three equipped spell cards with different names from your deck, Kindred Graveyard, to this card. You can send one to target effect monster on the field, change it to battle position, and uh, negate its effects. Or, excuse me, or negate its effects. Yeah, this is... Uh... <laughs> I've never actually seen anybody actually trying to do this. Most of the time, whenever the power tool was typically involved, it was just, you know, some sort of stupid blowout on the opponent. So, cool. Next up here we have... First of all, what what are you doing in here? We're, we're playing the Sword Soul with Labyrinth cards in Plunder Patrol. Um... Is this the right amount of engines and things that we should be trying to do out here? Like, well, what what's what is the level of synergy here? Obviously, I guess it's like the big welcome interactions. So we're also playing a phalanx in here. Excuse me, what? I, I think this might be one of the most random builds that I have seen on paper. Just trying out all of these different moving parts. Trying to come to I I, I Centurion stuff is in here as well. Like, what are we doing here? Uh, is it just to get to a uh, pack bit? Just to start sitting up? I I am intrigued by this. Like, honestly, um, I don't know. Like, I I, I genuinely don't know. This is. I'm I'm genuinely intrigued by the level of deck build that is present here because this uh this is kind of cute. Okay, sure. Next up is ah the Braid Raptors. Ah, look, another deck sporting off our favorite card in the whole wide world, Grass Looks Screener. I also see that uh, we are playing Cattle Call as well and you know anytime cattle call tends to be involved you know you're in for some sort of takeoff in terms of crazy power um, my only complaint i had about raid raptor was like the combo lines are super cool all right like you know, especially when you can go through arsenal falcon you know see the cali king yuga you have another boss monster that's literally unaffected the only problem was like this this deck it leaves something to be desired for the final form all right like i don't know what it is it just it it feels it's good but you always want something else on that end field to try to make the deck feel a little bit better and you know nibiru is your arch nemesis after all next up here we have dragon maids with the snake eyes package and i i tell you i, I think the more and more that i, I go down the rabbit hole of these builds um you are you are going to be seeing so much of the snake eye stuff like i at this point like your mini package is just you're sending up tidyings um you might be able to do changeover and set up i mean flamberge is a dragon monster after all so you, you do have some little synergy with this you know just to be able to make the big dragon and then of course you know you have your little split effect if it's sent to the grave it's about some of the two level one fire monsters you have extra synergy. I don't know if it's going to stick around and be an idea worth testing out. Because, I mean, once again, the, the modern era engines of Yu-Gi-Oh! are definitely taking the lead in terms of, you know, the big boys in the room for the meta. So, not all that shocked, but we'll have to wait and see kind of how things continue to shape up. If uh, maybe somebody else tries out Dragon Maids with the Flamberge Dragon stuff. And of course, uh, this last list, um, I, they had Snake Eye, or excuse me, they had Smoke Grenades still legal for this. I believe that they were playing a little bit older of a format here, but this is a good classic example as to why Smoke Grenade should not be allowed in the game. You know, especially when you see like all of the Warrior Equip stuff that the game has been going through. And you're like, well, you know, it's just you get the ability to look at your opponent's hand, get a free rip. Sure, but the Warrior stuff is going to be doing that 95% of the time. All right? Especially, you know, the minute you can assault drop this, 
Uh, smoke grenade is a troublesome card, and I understand why it is now gone. And this this should give you a good example as to the uh, the craziness that you kind of get with that. So that is everything that we have from the OCG today. There are a lot of very interesting moving pieces right now, kind of going forward, especially with like the, the more fun stuff you can do. The OCG will be getting a ban list, I believe, in the next three weeks, maybe four, depending on how things go. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. So please, leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here in day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Uh. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.